Thank you very much. Welcome back for the second half of the Greystone Ballroom set here with the uh, McKinney's Cotton Pickers. Uh, we opened up with a tune called Will You Won't You Be My Babe, which was a composition uh, with Howdy Quicksell and I believe it was uh, John Nesbitt who uh, worked together uh, since they were both uh, playing at the Greystone Ballroom in those days. And that's one thing that really makes, I think, this whole afternoon kind of unique is we, we started with Gold Cat, now we're doing McKinney's, and both bands played at the Greystone Ballroom. And that was a black band and a white band. And they were actually sharing the stage uh, at the Greystone Ballroom, where one band, if it was really, really packed at the Greystone Ballroom, one band would be on one end of the ballroom playing a 45 minute set, and then the other band was on the other side, normally the Greystone uh, Recording Orchestra. And uh, you heard Andy Shum doing a great John Nesbitt style solo there. Uh, the neat thing was that John Nesbitt and Bix were drinking buddies. Um, and as one of the story goes, uh, there's actually a place called the Greystone Gardens, which was behind the ballroom, and it was an outdoor uh, dance pavilion and a band would play there. Well, there was a brick in the wall of the Greystone Gardens uh, because no drinking was allowed. Um, Bix and Nesbitt would keep a flask in, hidden behind a brick. And be when they were off on their set, they would go back there, pull the brick out, pull the flask out, and start drinking, and then put the brick back. And then when the next guy was taking a break, he'd do the same thing. And so that's how they got around drinking on the stage. I don't think Andy has a flask with him today, so. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's one out there. So, but there's some great stories um, that go with the band. Um, it, yeah, it was kind of a short-lived band, but again, they accomplished so much with so few recordings. Um, and unfortunately, in the 30s, there were a lot of tragedies with the band, which I'll, I'll talk on later on. Uh, but yeah, what a band. I mean, you could already hear how hot the band was just by that first song that we played. So, and yes, the band is a little bit bigger than you saw as the Gold Cat Ensemble. We have four saxes, three trumpets, one trombone, and a rhythm section. And that was the basic instrumentation for the McKinney's band at that time. So we're going to move on now. Um, what the band also did, because they didn't always have vocals. Vocals were done for a lot of the recordings, but they did have George Thomas and Dave Wilborn providing vocals as well as Don Redman. Uh, but on this one, where the vocal goes, we're actually going to have Andy Shum do a John Nesbitt style solo because that's what they would do at the Greystone Ballroom. So here is the McKinney's version of I Found a New Baby.
Mike McQuaid on the tenor sax there. So. I'm gonna take a second to introduce the, the saxophones here. The, the three are uh, from the last set here, but we've added, we'll start on the end there, on baritone sax and tenor sax and clarinet. We have Jim Elliott. On alto sax and clarinet, we have Jason Downs. On alto sax and clarinet, we have Paul Furness. And on tenor sax and clarinet, we have Michael McQuaid. All right, so those first couple arrangements you heard came from John Nesbitt, who is the cornet player with the McKinney's band and uh, contributed a lot of arrangements to the band, as did Don Redman, which you'll hear some of his later on. Uh, but this is one that uh, he had arranged, but he wasn't in the band at the time. Uh, and we're going to have uh, Lee Barker switching over to the sousaphone. It's entitled Plain Dirt. We go plain dirt so a lot of fun to play that so I'm sure you can hear the difference between the McKinney's band and the gold cat band right yeah <laughs> I, I, <that's> <laughs> I mean, yeah the band <laughs> nah 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 <laughs> all right or this is one of the uh, recordings we're going to play for you from 1930 uh, which is getting toward the later part of the career of the, the McKinney's band here um, this was sung by George Fathead Thomas, and um, this one that everybody knows, and I'm actually going to try to sing it like Fathead sings it on the recording, which is a very weird tone, so um, that's right. <laughs> yeah, the band's like, uh-oh, so that's right. Yeah, my own head cold, that's right, yeah. Okay, so here we go from 1930, Baby Won't You Please Come Home. <laughs>
please come home Cause your daddy's all alone I have tried in vain Never no more to call your name When you left you broke my heart Cause I thought we'd never part Every hour in the day you will hear me say Baby won't you please come home Daddy needs mama Baby won't you please come home Baby oh, won't you please come home Come, come home Cause, cause yeah, cause your daddy Your daddy's all alone daddy, Yes sir I have tried, yes I've tried in vain Never no more, never no more to call your name When you, you, yes when, when you left you broke my heart Shabba do ba da Cause I thought, yeah babe, cause I thought we'd never part Yes, sir, every hour in the day, you will hear, hear me say, baby, won't you please come home, daddy's mama. There we go. Oh, my wife has never heard that way before. So now there is a lot of the, a lot of the musicians up here have heard me sing like that. Oh, I would love it. I need about four twoies old after this. So yes, if you didn't know, I'm a big fan of twoies old. So every time I come here, I inhale it. And if you'd pricked me, I'd probably be bleeding twoies old now instead of blood. So love it. Speaking of love, uh, we're going to go to a piece now um, called I'd Love It. And this is probably one of the most popular of the McKinney's numbers. Uh, and at the time, it featured a great piano player and celeste player on this. Fats Waller had joined the band at that time. So uh, you'll hear uh, Stephen doing a couple of little of these celeste hits that are in here, uh, which are a lot of fun. So here we go. I'd Love It.
right, now we're up to another fun song here. These are all fun. I always keep saying that. It's like, it's fun. This is fun. Oh, this is another fun one. So, yeah. Are you all enjoying yourself? Yes. All right, great. Well, when we had rehearsal yesterday, um, uh, two days ago, I'm sorry, we were just sweating. We had a five-hour rehearsal, and they had not seen this music yet. I brought it with me on the plane. And uh, we put it in front of them for the first time, and we only had an hour to run through it. And so this is what is an hour's worth of rehearsal, and I think this really shows how talented every musician is on stage for one hour of playing. All right, now we're up to a fun song. Um, pretty much from 1930. Uh, this had Dave Wilborn uh, doing the vocal, and Dave Wilborn was the banjo player, um, and actually lived, I believe, into the 80s, if I'm right, uh, played with a band called the New McKinney's Cotton Pickers, which were based out of Detroit at that time, and was still there, uh, chunking away on banjo, and I think he's one of the most solid rhythm banjo players to come out of the 1920s. He, he doesn't get a lot of credit, but he's just chunking away, just like John Scurry's doing back here today, so. Um, but this one, um, <laughs> this is a Fats Waller uh, composition and uh, a Nesbitt arrangement entitled Zonky. <laughs> a donut I just start laughing so even at home <laughs> all right uh, now we're on to another one here uh, another Nesbitt arrangement uh, we're gonna feature Andy Shum on this one where the vocal normally goes to give you another version of the Greystone band uh, what they were playing at the Greystone Ballroom um, I've actually been on the site where the Greystone Ballroom stood uh, on Woodward Avenue in Detroit um, I've made quite a few trips to Detroit to do research on Gene Goldcat and all the musicians there and uh, what stands in the place of the Greystone Ballroom right now is a McDonald's or a Macca's <laughs> <clears throat> and so I played there, I think it was 2011, after Australia's a couple months, my orchestra went up there and played for the Detroit Jazz Fest, and we were the only traditional band on the lineup. 
Well, we went down the road to Woodward Avenue, and we were going to play on the side of the Greystone while it was raining. And so we all went in in our dinner suits and to McDonald's, got some supper, took some pictures, and we were playing uh, Gold Cat McKinney's recordings in the restaurant. And they almost called the police because they thought we were going psychotic uh, with showing up in dinner suits. So, uh, but, but it's, it, it is. Uh, as, as much as people kind of give Detroit a bad rap as far as being really run down and decrepit almost, um, it really is a beautiful city. Uh, the old architecture that's there is unbelievable. The, I think the Michigan Central Depot, which stands all by itself outside of town, you can probably look it up on Google, um, has all the windows that have been busted out, uh, but the building still stands, and they're trying to get money to renovate it, um, but that's where all the musicians were coming in to Detroit to play, uh, and stopping there. It's unbelievable. And so uh, I try to make it there at least once a year to do research and uh, photograph the buildings and, uh, and just take in the history that that city had. So, uh, okay, we're gonna have some fun with this one. I'll make fun for you. To, I think one one of the McKinney songs that's my favorite to play. Uh, it's entitled "Crying and Sighing." Uh, the first four bars are, I think, one of my favorite spots of the whole piece. Uh, it sounds completely chaotic, and then it goes into the song. Um, and this is another John Nesbitt arrangement and composition. Uh, so here we go uh, with "Crying and Sighing." First, let me introduce the rhythm section, then we'll get into that. We have Stephen Grant on piano. Back on the banjo, we have John Scurry. And on the double bass and sousaphone, we have Lee Baca. All right, so here we go with Crying and Sighing.
There we are, crying and sighing. Okay, now again, we're up to another song that you guys can actually participate with with the band and a fun group vocal here. Um, I'm actually going to do the George Thomas vocal and the Cuban Austin reply at the same time. No, not really, but I'll do one and then the other and jump back. Uh, but you all should probably know this one as a standard in traditional music. It's tight like that. Folks are gonna sing a little song. Don't get mad because I mean no wrong. Because it's tight like that. Oh, it's tight like that. You hear me talking to you. It means it's tight like that. sleep since she's been gone you know it's tight like that oh it's tight like that you hear me talking to you that means it's tight like that oh uncle bill came home about half past ten you couldn't find his keys so he couldn't get in oh it's tight like that oh it's tight like that you hear me talking to you it means it's tight like that two songs left here for you and uh, thank you again for being here and uh, hopefully I haven't made anybody lose their lunch over my vocals so uh, <laughs> so all right we're gonna have some fun with this next one here um, as I said another fun one uh, Michael and Andy and I when we were in uh, Whitley Bay in Newcastle England playing for the Whitley Bay classic jazz party um, we were part of a recording session with Keith Nichols and some other musicians that were there at the festival uh, the CD that came out is called One More Time and I know they sold out of it over there already but they can order you one if you like it um, this is one of the songs that we recorded I brought seven arrangements and then Keith Nichols brought seven and we had just played three days of really hard music at the festival well that Monday morning we started recording and we had seven hours to record 14 songs that we had never seen before and it's actually um, as Keith Nichols said it's one of the best recordings he's heard of modern musicians playing in the traditional style um, and I heard it and yeah it's it is quite amazing when you go back and look at it, like wow we actually sounded like that in seven hours I mean it's unbelievable and you can actually find uh, two discs on there one is mono and one is stereo uh, so if you want to have that old time sound, go for the mono disc. The way he recorded it was Paul Adams with Lake Records. He had a ribbon microphone set up probably where that microphone is in front of the band, and then another microphone by Spatz Langham to do vocals. And it's just it's an all-star lineup of musicians who are really into the 20s music, and, and we nailed it. And this next piece is one that we recorded. Um, we're going to have a good time with it here, Mylon Burke Joys. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, we have time for one more song for you here, then we'll probably take a break and collapse in the back after, after this, this fun time up here on stage. And uh, uh, the last song we have for you isn't a McKinney's number, uh, but since I have this instrumentation, I wanted to uh, play this particular song. It's one of the first times I've gotten to play it in public. Um, a lot of people don't know that Gene Goldcat tried to make a comeback in 1959. Uh, he made an album called Dance It to the 20s and Hi-Fi. And Cy Oliver did all the arrangements for the band. And the only surviving Goldcat member to record on that was Chauncey Morehouse. Uh, but he had an all-star group of musicians from New York, a lot of studio guys that were performing in the band. One of the guys was Doc Severinsen, uh, the leader of the Tonight Show band with Johnny Carson in the States for many years. and. Um, this is one of Doc's first recording sessions, and uh, he's, he recalls getting a phone call. I called him on the phone, and um, I said, uh, is Mr. Severinsen there? And his wife said, well, who is this? And I told him who, because I can just find people's phone numbers off the internet. It's amazing. And um, stalking him, pretty much. And um, I said, is Mr. Severinsen there? And long story short, she said, well, uh, what's this in regards to? I said, well, a musician by the name of Gene Goldkett. And she said, Gene Goldkett. And his voice from the background just shouted, Gene Goldkett, give me the phone. And so he came running up, got the phone. And he's like, who is this? And told him who I was and my story. And said that this was one of the hardest recording sessions he had ever played in his entire life. Even harder stuff than The, the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And um, in November this past year, I got to meet Doc Severinsen in person. And I brought him all these arrangements because they were left on the music stand after they recorded. Gave them to him, and he, and he couldn't believe it. He said, this, this is amazing, wow. And later this year, he's actually coming to Davenport to do a performance um, to raise money for our Bix Society we have there. And uh, my orchestra is going to be playing all these charts that he recorded in 1959. And uh, he thought Gene Goldkett was dead when he got the phone call. His friends would play pranks on him and say they were this musician who was actually dead, and they wanted him for a job. And he's like, ha, 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 and he fell for it once and showed up, and of course nobody was there because the musician was dead. So yeah, fun jokes that they play over there in the States. So uh, since we have this instrumentation, we're going to give you the Cy Oliver version of the Goldkett recording of Sweet Georgia Brown.
Thank you very much. I'm going to introduce the brass section. I want to wait till the end because that's a really hard piece. We have Andy Shum on cornet. We have Craig Mitten on trumpet. Al Davey on trumpet. And Jeff Power on trombone. So this is McKinney's Cotton Pickers. Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break here. Thank you so much.